going home. Satan handed over to me, and I handed it back to me. He handed it back to me, and I handed it to him. So I step on that way, and sometimes I'm going to dedicate a church, and then finally, I got away from him, and went on to dedicate the church. Thank God. Standing up on this box this afternoon, I think me back to my mama used to put me on a box to wash the dishes. <laughs> well, I hope we do the same thing this afternoon. So the Lord bless. A few announcements. An announcement that I had to make just the other day. I was give a little paper here that said that please announce that Brother Vance Hoop. Van Hoot and W.E. Hitson will be in Phoenix, Arizona, February the 27th and March the 5th. Keep that in mind. And now, I think tomorrow night that Brother Oral Roberts is to speak here in perhaps this same auditorium at the Van Hoot. And Brother Oral is certainly a masterpiece of God in the pulpit. Wonderful man of God, man of faith. I'm sure it will be any good to come out here, Brother Robert, tomorrow night. And then the breakfast in the morning and so forth, as many, many as already I've seen sitting behind the curtain and got their tickets and so forth. We, that's uh, fine. So we're always glad to be in the condition. I know you have something coming off in a few minutes, or just maybe after you get through speaking, some kind of meeting. I'll cut my words as short as possible. One thing being a little hoarse, and next thing you squeeze your time, then you're already in your own hours. I know you're tired. Now, tomorrow, or next Sunday, the Lord willing, next Sunday, in February the 6th, next Sunday, in at the Assemblies of God in Tucson. We'll be praying for the state next Sunday uh, evening, beginning at 7.30 at Tucson, Arizona. And then we travel to the west coast to the, down to the lower off and the Long Beach, I believe it is, and then up to around Baker Street, or the next service is going on in. I hope that it's, it's God's will that I can be in the at the same time in Santa there. And also, uh, in Jerusalem, I'd like to go to Jerusalem once and see the land where our Lord has been. I want to preach to many of my fine friends in this and see Brother Baxter, Brother Rose, and so many around here. They quite a time to call their names. Standing there a few moments to go to see so Brother Smith, he must throw his arms around him. What a wonderful time of fellowship. Now, as you read the scriptures, I'd like to take for a text difference. We call that out of the third verse of the second chapter of Deuteronomy. We have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. I like to speak on the subject of turning you northward. It would be hard for Israel to think that the promised land was 40 years away when they were standing on the other side of the Red Sea, dancing, shouting, rejoicing, when they were only nearly just a few days from it. It is for just a very short time, I think, with an automobile, you can probably drive an hour and a half, from walking, maybe two days, three, four, something like that, easy, and just go on to the promised land. And they were thinking that they were almost there. And they were having a great jubilee you know, of shouting and praising God, seeing what God had did for them, and how it's been hard to make them believe that they were 40 years away from that promise, the full promise of God that is promised. Grace had provided them a great thing. Grace had provided them a Passover lamb. Grace had provided them a prophet, and grace had provided them an angel. The Passover lamb was for their sin. Their prophet was their instructor. The angel was their guide. Grace had provided everything for them. But in spite of all of that, 
They were not alone. And this priest had provided them an escape out of Egypt before they had any law. That grace had provided them one of the greatest revivals that they'd ever had. In this revival, they had seen great powers of God. In this revival, they had seen sunshine while the rest of the world was in darkness. In this revival, they had seen the mighty hand of God deliver the innocent people, bringing them from bondage into liberty. And in this revival, after they crossed over the Red Sea, they found all their enemies dead in the Red Sea behind them. Why would they want to add anything to that? They stand just about like our Pentecostal fathers did about 40 years ago. After we had seen the same thing that they had seen, one of the mightiest revivals that the church ever had, seen divine healing. The people brought out a bond, then bound by fetters of denominations and so forth, then brought out into a freedom. Grace had provided them everything they had need of. An angel of God to lead them, prophet, great man. I heard them say the other day that a Zeusa Street meeting, when they had it over here in California, that they thought it was a disgrace when they ever introduced song books to the church. They sang in the Spirit, just as the Spirit gave them utterance, they sang. They danced in the Spirit. They had a great time, and it accepted the Word of God as sanctification to separate them from their sins, and they know they passed from death unto life. What a revival they were having of some forty years ago. But as Israel did, so did our fathers make a fatal mistake. One thing is held them in the Word is another forty years. You find out that instead of being satisfied with what they had and what God had done for them, and seeing the works of his hands, the fruit of grace, providing everything they had need of, even to so much as they didn't have to have a songbook. I wish I could have seen that in them days. But Israel, after all those things, Israel in the natural, this is Israel in the spiritual. Just as God was taking his people to a promised land in the natural, he's taking his church to a promised land in the spiritual. And as uh, they was on their road, having a great time, but yet they, as your grace had provided everything that they had need of, yet they wanted something to do themselves. Something they could show God they had something to do into it. And that's what the church, when it gets in that condition, is always when they lose out. As when you try, or I try, or any man tries, to put his hand on the words of God, to add something to it or take something away from it. We must leave it just the way that God provides it for us. Just let the revival move on as the Spirit moves on. These people are only eight or ten days away from the full promise of God if they would have followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These people in this day, our fathers, were just a few days away from the fullness of God's promise if they just went ahead and followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. But we had to do something like they did. The most fatal mistake that Israel ever made was Exodus 19. And the grace had provided them all these things and had given them a revival, they still required a law. So they could have school, theological, trained ministers, and, well, just be like the rest of the people. Something they could fuss about. Something they could separate one another from. Break up a fellowship or brotherhood. We believe this and we believe that. If they just let it go on the way God had it going, it would have been all right. But we always try to put our ideas in it. That when we inject our ideas, is, when we inject our theology into God's Spirit, it takes God's Spirit away. That's the way it was in that day. They were on the road, but they wanted something they could do themselves. Do their fussing and do their tying on, they found out then that they drove the Spirit of God away from them. It was a great mistake. It was a great mistake. When 
we did the same thing, I promise. When the Holy Spirit first fell in the Zeus Street and many other parts of the world, if we would just study go on, leading of the Spirit, keep the world out, go on and let the Holy Spirit be, we're the sons in the promised land. <laughs> but we've been forty something years away from it, just as they did. So have we. Something came into the church, another issue, and we wanted to denominate ourselves instead of just going ahead and loving the brethren going on. Well, why not leave it alone? Every plan that my heavenly father has his plan will be rooted up anyhow. So what good does it do us to draw some of denominational bearers to keep the other fellow out? We only mess up something. I heard a little story going something like this that made it is appropriate to say in a little bit over a very still bunch of people as I have the privilege to see you. But said two monkeys were sitting in the tree, looking at each other. And they looked down and seen the poor human beings. And they said, aren't they visible? And they say that they came from us. That's mistaken. <laughs> No one I ever said to my coconut tree to keep my brother monkey from not eating the same coconut as I eat. That's a human being. The church has always been that way. One time, when Israel wanted to act like the rest of the nation, they wanted a king. They wanted Samuel to give them a king. Well, Samuel told them that this won't work. God is your king. Just let God be your king. But they wanted the king because they wanted to act like the rest of the nation. They wanted to act like the Philistines and the rest of the nation. Pattern act of the world instead of letting God be their king. Daniel told God said <coughs> to Samuel, Samuel is a faithful old prophet. All his beloved said, Have I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord but what comes to pass? Have I ever told you anything? In the name of the Lord, that did not come to pass. Have I ever begged you for your money or taken anything away from you? No, you have not begged our money, said Israel. Neither have you told us anything in the name of the Lord that did not come to pass, but still, we want to be anyhow. The man wants to do something himself. He wants to show his authority. He wants to show how big he is or how much different he can be from somebody else, from the rest of the people. That's what God goes out of the nature. Just exactly. Now, as Israel was, always has been, just as it was then, there was a mixed world of Israel. Some of them wanted one thing, some wanted another. That's the way we get it today, and usually, the one on the other side is the one that we are with. It's the same way as the Nicene Council, when our churches are set up. One wanted one thing and one another. A little Pentecostal group was pushed on the outside. The organization take it over. And the kings of the Nicolaitans became a doctrine as the Nicene Council. They formed their own faith, put up their own man, taken all the Nicol, as I said of the day, means conqueror. Nicolaitan means to conquer the lady and put all the holders in the man. Do as you want to and pay the money into the church and let the man do the forgiveness of sins. Let him be your friend and so forth. That's not God's will. God's will is not enough to lay it to everybody. You're an individual. God dealt with Israel as a nation. You and I, as individuals, we try to answer before God for our sins. And we see that that mixed multitude. Well, this is two sons of Isaac and Rebekah represent the world over. Every time there's a revival, there's twins born. Every time we have a revival, twins are born. He saw Jacob are twins. One of them was a man after the world. The other was spiritual. Uh, he saw just as good a man as Jacob was, if you looked at him. He liked to take care of his old blind father, which was a prophet. He was a good boy, morally, I guess, all right. But, and he helped work, and perhaps Jacob was just a little mama's boy, hung around the uh, mama, and just we call a little city. And so, he saw his love, a man of the world, natural, never cared us about the birthright. But the Jacob, it didn't make any difference how he got it. There was only one thing he had in his mind after the birth of it. Yes. No matter what anything else or how he got it, that's the way it is with the spiritual born church. When the Catholic Church had a revival, when Luther had a revival, when Wesley had a revival, 
Not cattle and all down to the ages, it's produced twins. And with Pentecost and a revival, it's produced twins. When Moses had a revival down in Egypt, it produced twins. A mixed multitude. One to, one to the world, it wants to act like the world, be like the world, and pattern their message with the world. The others don't care about what the world says, how classic it looks, or how unclassic it looks. They got one thing in common that's hold on to the birthright. Yeah. It's a hold of God. Just the way it's always been. That's the way it is just today, my friend. Yeah. Hold on to the birthright. Jacob, he says, make him give us how much they call him a sissy, how much, what he, how he got it, just so we need God. That's the way it is today. Makes no difference. The people who are spiritual. Now, uh, many times the uh, churches are compromised. They get so if you just shake hands with the preacher. As David is with the well preached at our own love, that God don't have any grandchildren. That is true. Our Pentecostal churches are bringing in their young ones, place them up on the seat, and put their members of the church. They never come through the process of being born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and upon their own. We can take them into the church. Then they got a bunch of flat top haircuts, wicked, run around on the street, just like the rest of the world. Women with bobs, hair, wearing makeup, and everything else. It's yeah, a kind of pattern like the world. Yeah. We're going back to the spiritual thing. Yeah, yeah. We have our great moves and our great big churches and how to be bigger than the other fellow and showing the other fellow over and working for our organizations, denominations. What have we got? We're hatching out a bunch of high-bred people instead of born again children of God. That's right. High-bred. One of the nations of the world. A high bread can never cross himself again. When a mule is ever born, a mule cannot be nothing else but a mule. Yeah. That's all he is. He's born. He's a mule. He's a half breed. He's between a horse and a mule. He don't know where his papa is, where his mom is, where he comes from, where he's going. He's just ignorant as he can be. He has got no, no gentleness to him. You can talk to him and just stick his ears out and nigger. Oh, oh, with his big ears out. Sometimes I get around and preach to a lot of them and you that knows a little about God that a hot and hot knows about our gift tonight. Stick your ears out and say, well, the hearings of miracles is fast. There's no such thing as a high brand. He yeah. might go out to a very constant organization. That might go out any other organization. But a born again, the only one, the only thing I love is a hybrid horse. Or not a hybrid horse, a real general pedigree horse. What I like is a pedigree, Pentecostal experience. One who knows where they come from, knows what's got a hold of them, and knows where they're going. With the spirit of gentleness, sweetness, and holy spirit. Some of tolerance and fellowship reach across the line and shake hands with any brother. Take him in. He's a brother citizen of the same kingdom. No matter how he was baptized or sprinkled or poured or what he did, he's still in his head or jumped up and down or whatever he got, he's a brother and he loves those who got the Holy Ghost, he's your brother. And a real pedigree found again, Pentecostal man and woman, believe that with all your heart. That's it out there found. Certainly. No. These twin revivals, one brings forth a man that wants to be intellectual, wants to be in school. They're trying to dodge that issue of new birth. The church is trying to dodge it. The day we take the people in for water baptism, put them in the church for water baptism. You might put them in the church for water baptism, but you'll never put them in the Christ for water baptism. You've got to be born in there by the Spirit. Amen. That's right. I've also said, I'll say again, I don't care what kind of a birth it is, any birth is a man. If it's in a pig pen, or if it's in a corn shop, or if it's in a pink decorated hospital room, it's a man. And so is the new birth of man. It'll make you do things that you never thought you would do. It'll make you weep, bow, cry, and raise up your hands and tell all kinds of shines and everything else. And you'll act just straight to the poor, starchy, self-styled group. But you don't care as long as you get birth out of it. You've got to be born. Being born to be coming into new birth. Coming to a place where we're trying to stop the issue by taking in members. Trying to beat this other fellow, our organization's growing higher than the other. If this don't now to us, nothing. It's not a thing. It's the kingdom of God at what counts. Yes. We're all working for one place. Our brothers in the Baptist church and the assemblies are the oneness and the treatise and the fivenesses or whatever it was. We want to be working for one principle. That's for our heavenly father. They get born again children into that kingdom up there. 
Outside of that, we're working in vain. We're trying to do something for a man-made institution that will fall as sure as two choose it for. Got the fall as a man. Yeah. That's the bone. Only God can stand. Have nothing against them. That's fine and dandy. But when we draw those barriers that we cannot fellowship with the other fellow, that's when it gets bad. I've been given out and told that I dislike organizations. I like the people in the organization. But that is organization is fine as long as you don't draw a stop and say, we need this and you the rest of it, stay away from it, and we will not cooperate with that business and group or anything as long as they do like the way they'll be an organization. When they get to be an organization, I'm getting away from them. That's exactly right. I don't believe in this stuff. I believe that we're brothers and have fellowship and power and leading of the Spirit. That's exactly what I like about it. A mixed politics. They had a law. They went to Little Sunny. I got a law. So they could. Well, they have doctor's degrees, Ph.D. and L.L.D.s, U.S.D.s, and all kinds of things. And so the first thing you know, it got them in trouble. Now, the law served its purpose. It was all right in its day. The law did all right. It didn't say it served its purpose. So has the denomination done all right. It's all right in its purpose. But remember, the law never got them to the promised land. Joshua took them over. Great. Not the law. Neither will the denomination, any denomination ever take the church of God over. It'll be the grace of God that shut up out of our hearts by the God of the Holy Ghost that will take us to the common land, into the fullness of God's blessing. Certainly it is. They make a fatal mistake when they do those things. The service purpose was very well, but the time come when it wasn't no good no more. God let it die out so he could take grace and take them across the position places into the places of the promised land. All oh, the grace of God, whatever it is, or prophets, teachers, so forth. Now the denomination can't do that. They'll have a bunch of presidents to lay hands on it, walk into more than throwing water on them. It's got to take the Holy Ghost to separate me, Paul and Barnabas. It takes the Holy Ghost yet to separate a man and woman in places where they're specifically in Christ. Hallelujah. That is true. Now, we find out they journeyed from their event to Katie Farnia. Katie Farnia, they made their most fatal mistake they ever did make. Israel made a real mistake when she came to Kadesh Barnea. Well, they had, then they had their 12 different heads, 12 different groups of them. And they sent them up to the promised land to spy out to see what they could get, any information from the inside. When they come back, we find out that ten of the group said it's impossible to take it. We just can't do it. It's too much of a job. We're a little bitty fellows up the side of the land. We look like grasshoppers. There was two that had evidence. They'd been somewhere. When they come back, they had the fruits of the land. They come back to know that they had been over and brought back the evidence that it was a good land. Well, that's about the way we get it out of a, a revival, about two in a sentence. It's just about like getting the music take. About two out of a good sentence. And the first thing those John Dwayne Taylor come back with the evidence that it was a good land. They had an evidence, a evidence, but that wasn't all the evidence. They just had one evidence. That's what the Pentecostal got. When they crossed over the land into the wilderness, over the Red Sea, and found their enemies dead, they began speaking in tongues as an evidence that they'd been over there. They know there was something good. They know there was a land somewhere that was beyond anything we reached yet. That's right, but that's not all the things. We set out on that, went to see on that. Right. God said if any one among you to come in and speak with tongues, the other one come in, they'll say, well, they're all mad. But if one will prophesy and reveal the secrets of the heart, then they'll fall down and say, surely God is with you. Paul said that. Now, when we stop on one evidence of speaking in tongues, being the Holy Ghost, which is all right, that's true. That's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. But just look at the other things that goes in there. Amen. But as soon as we did it, we had to denominate ourselves to keep the others out, build up a fence around our coconut tree that nobody else would eat off of this but us. That tree, the rest of us couldn't get anywhere. It's our own selfish ideas instead of letting the Holy Spirit lead us all out. And we waited for four years and nothing's happened. Yes, amen. We're still staying in the same place, same old thing. Oh my, we find out that they made a fatal mistake. And they're raising up a big bunch of fires. Hmm. That's what we had, a big bunch of fighters. One said, Dress God on the assembly. You all want this, don't you have to do it? You want church of God? We got it. Church of God, bless God, we're the ones that got it. We got the prophesied name. The one that says we got it because we baptized by it. Hallelujah. 
A bunch of liars, doctors say you check out your team died. Exactly right. The Bible said they stay dead until all the old fighters die out. Yes, Amen. You don't stay like that until all the old fighters die out. The Bible said so. Old fighters, fight over their organization boundaries. Uh, don't you have no fellowship in that group? That's other truth. And this is so and so. As long as you got that in your head, you can just check right down the mountain and starve to death. If you ever think what those people done for 40 years, not even the 40 days away and God's kept them there 40 years. That's how it was a long time ago. I believe that someone's speaking of the coming of the Lord Jesus. I believe it's past due. I believe it's because of the church. The reason it's past due. Jesus said so. As it was in the days of Noah, so would it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, God was long suffering, not willing that any should perish. He waited for the people to come in. And today, He's waiting for the church to get together. I know it's not proper. It's not proper for most people. But brother, it's the message of the hour to come together. The sun has to move together. We have to be one church of the living God. We have to be sad to serve the parents of the One is to be the fire of all of us together. Business man's organization is part of God's program. 
I'm not going to come to stand here before him. If I did, I'd be a hypocrite. But I mean it because they have not tried down a stake and say, this organization or that organization, they stretch the line far enough that they can take it off. And that's the reason I'm right out there today because we're in the very top of heaven that I believe is right. Yes, it was stretched in the Singers of God, to the Church of God, to the Four Square, to the PAJT, PAW, United. Everybody, who so in the will, let him come that he might drink out of the water of the house and the water of the God's place. No matter if you're riding one hump, two hump, three hump, or how many humps you've got in the water of the house, don't make any difference. That's why you're riding through all of the church at this house. That's where they come together. Now, that's where he comes to the church. That's where he comes around. Because in that, I can speak to all of them and get my message over to them. So let them know that this is the thing I believe in. I believe this is the same thing to all of it. They got to be a part of it. They can be an example of what God can do when men can come together and break their denominational barriers. I believe that these men here you see now, these younger fellows, that are with the church, it's the fruit of sons of the old fighters. But these fellows are not fighters. The new group wasn't fighters. He let all the old fighters die out. When the old fighters died out, he took their sons and raised up among them, got away, and sent over to the five promise. I believe that that's what we're seeing today. I believe that's what this Christian businessman organization is doing. God is using it mightily, and you'll continue to do it as long as you keep that denominational barriers broke down. They don't tell you what church is wrong to do, wrong to do, and you won't do. But they're trying to get you. Get away from the old spider disposition. Back to where these rooms put our arms around any brother. These Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, Wonder Street, or whatever he is, put our arms around him, he's a brother. Right by who loves him. Hey, now. As long as we keep that out of him, God's going to reach one of these days, I'll be ready to speak now. You've been on this mountain of organization for 40 years. Let's move upward. Let's move out of here. This is my ministering brother out there. Don't you think we've been on this mountain long enough? Don't you think we've bumped and passed and carried on and stood over our organization boundaries long enough? Let's get off of this mountain and move up to this mama's land. Let's start going up. This is the special land. God told them, touch the special land. All your fighters are gone now. Put your sword back in its season. Don't fight. Listen, man. Don't you make the same mistake your father's in or you be here for you, too. Deal with a Christian men's organization and so forth, or Christian men's unit, unit. If you ever organize it, you'll stick right here another 40 years. But it's time that God is calling his church to move up. I believe that. I know that you said, now, as you go by Mount Sierra, now there is your denominational brother, Esau, sitting up there. A good Presbyterian, Methodist, or Baptist. Now, don't bother him. Don't fuck at him. Just try and find out how you do that. Walk that on. But you've been left to get him and shake him and tell him you're about nothing. Right. Remember, he's got just what God gives him. He can have the same revival you do. Right. He stopped. He told, I told Joshua, see that you got going well now there now, because I give that to the Esau. That's all what he's supposed to know. That's all he knows about. That's right. That's the only thing he knows is his denomination. Well, we are so and so. We are. That's all he knows. That's all God gives him. Just pass on by now. Don't go to front and fight with him. Just pass by quietly. But look in here, Jacob, you Pentecostal Jacob, you really born to get a tough experience and let the Holy Ghost. Don't go to front with him. But the Pentecostal Jacob has the full promise down in the land. The thing is there to happen. God said he just broke the whole thing and put you in the promised land. But the fullness of the spirit that ever operation. I stood the other morning at me, feeling myself as my ministry is a spiritual ministry as I'm not much of a preacher. But notice, in those lines when we talk about Charles Christ, when him dying, our brother Sakarin, prophesying that these things come to pass, oh my spirit rolls up within me. So that's it, that's it, that's it. If they could only see him. That's it. We're ready to go up and take the land. You know what I'm saying about hospitals and so forth? We're ready to do it. Yeah. When you start with the old fires, get together. Oh, you ministers, you, you brother, you're a genie. Break down those denominational barriers. We can't get a penny cost of revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revival. The Holy Spirit falling back in the church. And he left by the Holy Ghost. God 
duty to do it. Work for stress the land. Pass on by.
something that's going on. I think that the church really, uh, any church organization, tries to the life of Christ. I believe that. Because it's something that's been grasped or added in here. If the second power out of the way is putting it up on a minister or a bishop or whatever it might be, like the Revelation says that the seeds of the nickel lady is nickel to overturn laity. I think that a meeting like this, it gives God a chance to work for laity. The power of God works in the land. Now, this was in 1933. I was still a uh, missionary Baptist minister. And I'm 51 years old now. I've seen thousands of those things, many of you years in the meeting. I'll just call anyone to ask them why ever they can never say it's a big official. Now, like, uh, we find out what's the news to the church today. And like the I of the Holy Spirit is new to the church the way we think here in the year of Baptist and my brother and so forth testifying, we find that this is the new to the church. But what it is, it's, it's another brain from the book. I like it. If you watch it, it acts just like it didn't act. How the Holy Spirit will rise up among the people and speak different things. This morning I was going down to my church. I didn't know what to call the thing. But I, I saw these things that for many years before the Lord went to Mar and was in the dictator now by the name of Mussolini. And his first invasion was in Port Belgium. And he was almost out of Ethiopia, but it comes in this dream. And everything that is broken was better. Outstanding things. They didn't lie like a string of old people in the Georgia. And show them how it comes to pass by a place perfectly. And the seven was predicted. Now it's broken there that when the gates of the wind and the light were open. But if so, I have nothing against my being called for you. The whole nation is just like we're rocks to blow down and the stuff to the small dream and so forth. And immediately after that, the tour of the dark, surely, I've been so stationed here in the world at the water, and luckily it was just a black red net and all around, and everything that was broke up in the election, and it was clear that we know that the election is not a president now. I'm so glad that the president was a black man, and he was totally asking all about the black man, and he was a good boy. I just come a lot of work as a man, and I mean, he often can do whatever he thinks. All right. So, now, since we are president, we have to use the second. I've seen the door for the people that are going to down here. I'm on the door that we've been doing this year with our dark flags of the story and the honor of the city. You make a real president for the first four years. But you just want to. We can say the way our day is ready. It's later than you think it can ever be. The hour is getting close. And we have a few of flattery for the state. And we're we're near the end time now. I, I'm positive of that. I'm just as positive as you are. Many of you have said, I can come this about the ministry and so forth, but that may be what it may be. But do you believe? But in speaking in the name of the Lord, uh, I'm there on this thing. So, and then everything comes to work with us in the next nine years. And all of the Father has given me is no comfort. And we've got this sort of thing in real life. And I appreciate it. And I've been going to say something. I think somebody else has done the second time I did for Billy Boy. I think you were going to be able to say that. Since you were coming, I was thinking that I was going to be born again. So, I'm praying that the many chapters of our Lord has given me and now they do organize Never go to my ministry. I've never tried to live that my ministry was going to show me. There's not a way to get me to find why it was shown me. Remember when I was on the third day, we all said, This is what we were supposed to do. Now I have my conviction in the body of Christ. It's not just spiritual healing, it's over the rest. That's what I'm ordained. That's my purpose. I'm being your Christ, but it's not just spiritual healing. What we call nature. If that man has a little boy, he's been a brother for many years, he's been a great shot in his hand. The way of the 